so this is a disclaimer i don't have everything in my life figured out i'm not at my best place right now i'm no therapist or pastor this is just me sharing what i've experienced or what i've learned in my life over time because of course this is true talk with angela so we talk about real life matters <laughs> So when I was a little girl, I lived alone with my mom because my other ones were always in boarding school. She's a businesswoman. She travels from time to time to get goods. So anytime she's leaving, she tells me what and what to eat. Like maybe she's going to use two days. At most, she uses like two days. She's going to tell me what I'm going to eat till that following day, and I'm going to like write it down. There's a book. I'm going to write every single instruction she gives me down. She tells me what to eat today, this afternoon. She does it in such a way that sometimes I don't even get to eat everything I've written down because she just makes sure I'm not hungry in any like. Everything is comfortable for me. My mommy has like a wheel. Yes, like a wheel that I have to go back and check anytime I'm confused about what to do or what to eat at all. When my mommy travels eventually, sometimes I don't go back to that book. I just live my life because I believe I'm a big girl. So I really don't need to live my life with any written down process and all those things. And you know somehow I overeat, I find myself starving, hungry. And it was like when mommy was going, this food looked like it was going to be too much. Because sometimes she cooked some things and she already kept it in the freezer, just microwave this and and it feels like this food there are too much. I just spend it two days. And you know, because I didn't follow the arrangements, I get to finish the whole food before the day she's going to arrive. Or sometimes I just miscalculate. I overspend my money. I just live life anyhow then put like that during those days when she's not around and it became a very big problem for me and that is the way a lot of us are living in our day to day in reality that is the way we are living we say we've given our life to christ we say that god is the creator and is the author and he knows everything about us and he knows how our life is supposed to be but we refuse to go back into the will into the arrangements into the the the, the promises he has given us and which is the word of god this generation we tend to replace the word of god with a lot of things we tend to replace the word of god with um music yes i do that a lot Instead of reading my Bible, I feel like I can li listen to music and just use it to replace it, you know? We listen to pastors online, we listen to messages from pastors, we read books. And one day, it just came to my spirit. I just felt God talking to me about it that reading messages so listening to messages reading books or listening to music cannot give the same effect that the word of god itself we give because they are not the same thing we are very lazy and and maybe i should say too busy to go back into the world and we just want somebody that already read it to just come and give us the summary i've also been like that like i read my bible like okay in the morning that's it like by listening to messages a lot and i read books and i listen to music those things cannot still replace the word of god like the book the word of god is like the wheel that he has given us is sometimes i call it a shit code yes i call the word of god a shit code because it's a shit code because if you if if you if you see a lot of business principles and a lot of things out there that people 
sell or, um, or seminars that people attend, we realize that a lot of their principles were gotten from the Bible. Yes, but we as believers, I've just ignored the Bible. We've, we've just kept the Bible there just to be under our pillow and we feel like the music we're listening to can replace the place of the Word of God. It can't. It can't. A lot of times we feel like things are not going right for us. Like, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. Why are things not going right for me? Why is the promises of the Lord not following me or why am I am I lacking and all those things but the truth is we've not gone back we just add those things through a preacher's mouth through our pastors telling us that okay these are the promises of God for us and all those things they even give us Bible verses sometimes but we don't go back to check the Bible verses we don't go back to say okay this is the situation going on in my life right now because there's nothing that's happening to you right now that has not happened to someone at some point inside the Bible. Yes, what is worse than dying and coming back to life? Lazarus, he died and came back to life. God brought him back to life. So if you are still alive, trust me, no matter the situation you are, the solution is in the Bible. Go back into the Bible Ask yourself, what does God say about this situation in my life? What does God say about lack? What does God say about not being able to pray? Because some of us are struggling with our prayer lives. What does the Bible say about not being able to pray? What does the... You just, you just have to put a little of attention into the Word of God. So many times we try to live our life based on the society's standard, what the society is saying, not what God is saying. And that's why we find ourselves really lonely sometimes. When you don't live a life aligned with your authentic self, when you don't live a life aligned to your purpose and your calling, trust me, it's going to feel like a very, very lonely life because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing you are doing what someone else is supposed to be doing what someone else has been called to do because that is what that person is doing you also follow a lot of us have mentors and we just feel like oh because this person is my mentor my life has to go according to the way the person's life went sometimes you get so busy and occupied with doing this one particular thing that we believe that is what we're supposed to be doing but the more we do this thing we feel we're drowning like that's happened to me a lot of times i feel like i'm using all my strength all my might i'm praying i'm i'm begging god that this one thing i'm doing should be a success but at the same time it feels like i'm losing myself it feels like i'm losing my mind <laughs> most of the times that's because that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Yes, you might feel like it. Like you might have talents that actually relate to that thing. Mm -hmm. But that might just not be what you're supposed to be doing. They say the opposite of loneliness is meaningful connection. So who are you connected to? Which connection do you think is the most important in your life? Yes. As for me, my connection with God is the most important because it creates every other earthly connections. First of all, the fact that I'm in this life, the first connection I had, the first earthly connection I had was with my mom when I was in her womb. So who kept me there? God did. He kept me there. So definitely, the person who kept me there knows the reason why he did. He has a plan. God doesn't just have a plan for you after they've given back to you. He said, I paraphrased that, even before in our, we were in our mother's womb, he knew us. So that is, that means he had a plan. So I can't just be on this earth, sitting down without plans, not knowing what to do to my life. No, God knows. That is why he has created his word and the Holy Spirit for us to go back to when we feel so confused. 
where we feel like no i don't know where my life is going to anymore i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing you have the holy spirit and the word of god especially the word of god and that is actually what i'm here to emphasize today the word of god we ignore it a lot of time yes we tend to just look it over like it doesn't matter what matters is me feeling that heavy connection with god but we don't know that the basics for this connection is actually the word of god the word of god is not just a paper it's not just a book it has a spirit behind it and when we read the word of god we read it with the awareness that we are communicating with someone who is the, who is our father who is our maker we read it with the awareness that there is someone that has written this thing, that has kept this thing here for me to be able to go back to. Do you understand? Just like the way I go back to my mom's list whenever she travels, when I feel so confused, when I feel, oh, I've finished the old food in the old house. What am I going to eat? I can't cook. I can only warm food. What am I going to eat? And you know, most times when I go back to pick up that list, I see that there is a food that I didn't even know. Probably because I felt like I've known everywhere that there's food. So when I'm done eating, I go back to bed and I realize that there are a lot of things, there are, there are foods that I didn't even think of that she kept since she wrote and since she has instructed me to do that okay, my mom is coming tomorrow. I've not done this. She asked me to do this. Uh, just assume I felt like I, I knew everything in a friend and I didn't need to go back to that book. That means she would have been back home i would have not done a couple number of things she asked me to do and i would have not been able to feed well and a lot of things would have not just gone well for me at that point in time just because i refused to go back like what would it have taken me to just take that book and live according to it like mom said i should eat this this morning okay i'll eat it and do you get this is just the way it is when we refuse to study the word of God, which is the Bible. It feels like we are just living life based on what others are saying, based on our own understanding. And the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. I think it's Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7 or something yes so you don't just believe you can do everything all by yourself that's one major reason why we find ourselves being lonely yes and we seek comfort or happiness or joy in places that they don't even lie there and it doesn't last and we find ourselves lonely again we sometimes feel like following God's plan for our life is boring. <laughs> I also had that mentality growing up because, you know, I grew up in a, a church that we were not allowed to do a whole lot of things, a lot of rules and regulations. So I used to feel like, oh, what a boring life. Being a Christian is so boring. Following God's rules and regulations is so boring. But... <laughs> But now I know better. It's not boring. Like, like, come on. They say there's nothing that was created that wasn't created through God. So, including the fun, including the fun, God wants you to have a very fun and interesting life. Come on. Come on. God wants you to have a very fun and interesting life. I'm just trying to say it the way I can because sometimes these things we can't um, understand them just by listening to people. We need to experience it. Yes, it is then that we understand. So, like I said earlier, I'm no therapist or expert. You know, I'm just here to share what I've experienced with you guys and hoping that it helps somebody if it's just one person i'll be very very glad so guys 
we've come to the end of today's video and thanks so much for having me i love you guys so much and a happy happy life